Chicago, you're up next. November 11th and the 12th. Grand Rapids, December 9th and the 10th. Get your tickets to those shows on my website at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pants Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all your social media. If you are watching this show on YouTube, thank you very much. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I say, it means the world to us. It's a big help, and it's free. It's free. And if you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon we're going on well over 100 episodes now. I've been telling y'all, it is $5 a month. There's no other levels. You sign up for a year, you get a month free, and it's the honeydew with y'all. And I highlight the low lights with y'all, and y'all have the wildest fucking stories I've ever fucking heard, all right? It blows my mind every fucking week, all right? So if you or someone you know has that story, it's got to be heard. Please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. We'll hopefully get you on. And do an episode together. All right. The tour continues. Uh, Chicago, I will see you guys November 11th and 12th. And Grand Rapids, December 9th and the 10th. All right, y'all. That's the business right there. You guys know what we do here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Very excited to have this guest on this week. First time here on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eddie Bravo. Welcome to the Honeydew, Eddie Bravo. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Dude, thank you for being here. Am I close enough to the mic? Yeah, come on up and get in with okay. me. Uh, um, yeah. Before we get into anything, please uh, plug, promote everything you'd like. All of it. Uh, me and Sam Tripoli, we do a show called Tinfoil Hat Comedy. We tour around uh, the United States. We got um, Fresno coming up, Calusa Casino coming up. That's in the first weekend of December. And then we're trying to set up uh, Denver and Salt Lake City. That's in the works right now. That'll be sometime in November. Uh, if you're interested in jujitsu, 10thplanetjj.com. That's uh, where you could find all my jujitsu information. And oh, and I have, I have a podcast on Rockfin. It's called Look Into It with Eddie Bravo. I got about 23 episodes. Uh, the first eight are free, and uh, it's it's behind a paywall, but. I'm only interested in doing podcasts for people that uh, um, want to support me. You know what I mean? If you don't want to support me, then that's fine. I don't need, I don't need your attention. You know, I want to save uh, my energy for people that really want to hear what uh, is on my mind. And if you don't, if it's too crazy, ignore me. That's it. Great. <laughs> but we do give out free episodes, though, after, you know, the first eight are free, and then from nine, nine through 23, you know, Rockfin is awesome. It's like the uh, the Netflix for podcasts. You pay, I don't know what it is, nine bucks, and you get everybody's oh, podcast. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you get oh, everybody's podcast. Like okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Man, it's awesome. There's so many great podcasts on there, and you get, all, you get them all, just like Netflix, but for podcasts. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I've been following you for a while through comedians like Tripoli and those guys that I know, and I've been a fan of yours, so I appreciate you coming on. And I first just met you recently, um, officially, at Tripoli's show at the Yeah, you blew store. me away, man. You blew me away. You're, you, I was like, who the fuck is that dude? <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen you do uh, stand-up, man. i never even heard of you. And uh, I inquired, and I'm like, damn, Ryan Sickler, okay. And then I went backstage, and we started rapping, exchanged numbers, and boom, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, you actually said you went out there and watched me, and I was like, oh, fuck. I was waiting uh, you to see were what great, you thought. Dude, yeah, dude, great. thank you. you that made me feel good. <laughs> um, so, look, I want to talk to you about your life. I mean, I don't know anything about you, so let's start at the beginning. Um, where are you from originally? Here in, in Southern California? Born in, down, born in East L.A., actually, but um, was raised in Orange County, Santa Ana. That's where they put all the Mexicans. <laughs> you said put them. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't know what to do with them because all the white people from LA they left. Uh, they left LA south to uh, Orange County. That's the new spot. Uh, too many Mexicans uh, 
uh, were infiltrating LA. So the white people said, let's go to Orange County. They took off. They went you know, Laguna Niguel, Newport Beach, Costa Mesa. They're like, oh shit, this is awesome. But they needed to bring some Mexicans to clean the goddamn houses, you know, so and cut the grass and build shit. So they designated Santa Ana uh, as the, um, the servants, uh, the workers. Wow. <laughs> all right. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, like where you all live. You can clean yeah. and work here, but you can't live here. Yeah. You're going to live in Santa Ana. Right you're going to live in Santa Ana. Yeah. It's still Orange County. You could tell people you live in Orange County. You don't have to get all detailed. You just say Orange County. You benefit from it. So don't tell them Santa Ana, though. There would be some white people that lived on the edge of Santa Ana. Which That'd be like where a, with my family yeah, would have been. Like, the, edge, <laughs> like the, nor, the northern edge. One in and one out. That's where we'd have been. The for northern sure. edge of Santa Ana. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely where we would have lived. Bordered a white city, Tuston and Orange. <laughs> Tuston. And Tuston and Orange. <laughs> I know the jewelry exchange in those Tuston. Those were like white cities back then. I mean, those were good cities. Hilarious. But... Santa Ana, the part the, the part of Santa Ana that bordered those nice cities. We had a few blocks in Santa Ana. So your mail said Santa Ana, you lived in a nice house. And it was it was like, damn, you live in Tustin. Those people didn't, even though on their mail it said Santa Ana, they said, fuck that shit. This is Tustin, dog. I live in Orange. They would lie. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> technically they kind of did. Because you could tell it didn't belong, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older brother, younger sister, uh, you know. So three of you and then your parents, were they together growing up? Did they split? Uh, the neighborhood I grew up in uh, was mostly single moms with their kids. One by one, all the husbands left on our, our block, just one by Is that one. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Dude, they all left. And all the kids on the street. Where all the pickup trucks go? <laughs> they They're left for gone. good, man. There was, that was one couple that stayed together to the end. They were like the, the king and queen of the block. <laughs> Macario and Socorro Galvan, both of them, man, they were like the the king and queen of that that street. And we had a church, dude. We had a church. We lived by a church, <laughs> big ass church, Our Lady of Pilar. And um, so one by one, oh, except shit. for Macario and Socorro, except for them, mm -hmm. everybody got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody made it. And the then moms it, all stayed. The moms and the dads stayed. Were like we'll go do. The yeah, the, the, the moms never left. The mom stayed. Dads left. And then you know, and all the kids that we were all just like wild little Mexican kids into hard rock and heavy metal. So you had a lot of kids in that oh, your yeah. neighborhood at the same age and oh, everything. Huh? No, not exactly. There was I was part of the younger crew. Um, I was. I had, my brother was four years older than me, and he had his crew. Like, if I was 10, he was 14. Big mm -hmm. difference between 10 and 14. Oh, wow. You're right about that. So my brother, there was, like, you know, a few 14-year-olds, and there was only, like, two or three 10-year-olds. And, um, and then there was, like, some 18-year-olds. They really didn't hang out with us that much. And then the 22-year-olds, you know, who lived in the back in the back shed. Right, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. got divorced, too. So there was a bunch of levels. I was part of the younger kids. Everybody getting divorced. And then, it, and, then, and then it ends up, it, we end up just like playing football on the streets and we're just monitoring whose mom uh, is dating, who ha whose mom has a new boyfriend oh, okay. and what kind of car is they driving. Look at your mom's boyfriend's car. Look at your mom's boyfriend. And then you just talk shit on your, uh, <laughs> your yeah, mom's yeah, boyfriend. Yeah. And then with my best friend, Motherfucker got a Fiero. You got oh, a Fiero. When's the last time you saw a Fiero? Dude, and then my best friend's mom dated this fuck. You know, because every now and then, Shit. my mom was kind of hot. So she she even dated like a dude from the California Angels back when they were like, Juan Benitez. My mom dated that really? dude. Really? Yeah, my mom was a little hottie. So when she, when she, when um, my stepdad finally left and, and left her alone with three kids to raise, that was my stepdad, but that was my older brother. Like, We'll come back to that. I got yeah, you because I want yeah, to. I it, want you to explain the, the, it. It's complicated. All right. My like my mom and dad, stepdad, a lot of weird shit, but um, not weird, typical actually, but my my friend's mom, damn, she scored. She got a boyfriend that drove like a big ass you know, truck driver, and he was all a Mexican guy, but like Americanized kind of, uh, born in Mexico, but. Been out out here for like 15 years, got a good job, truck driver. And he was all about Peterbilt. 
Like it was just, you know, yeah, dude, he yeah, was just like yeah. Peter belt, bu- belt buckles. So he had like a, a decent car. Like he had a Camaro or some shit. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's mom's coming up. And we were like, oh shit. And he was like so proud <laughs> that his mom got uh, a boyfriend with a job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a relief he, for him too. He, dude, he was to be so, shit on. Dude, he was, Cause he never had a dad. Just like yeah. me, my dad was always gone too. Oh, Everybody's dad dude. was gone. So his dad was gone. Everybody dealt with it in different ways, but he loved his mom's new boyfriend so much he started he wore he got a peter <laughs> built belt buckle dude he had like he had like peter built uh like toy trucks and shit he was all about it dude he was so proud he, he felt like so he had the best excited. mom on the block <laughs> he's like oh peter built's the best so every time we go and go to peter built oh that's a kenworth oh, and like shit. Uh, yeah and then he left her <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still he started taking his That's shit down. That's when you down. all should have worn Peterbilt. He go, "Where's your Peterbilt shirt at?" We were all with Mack trucks now, man. <laughs> yeah, so it was a lot of that shit. <laughs> That's great. Dude. All right, so let's go back for a second. Your your biological father. He okay, so was they, around for how long? Okay, so my mom, eighteen, is dating. Uh, see, I said my mom was. Fine. Even though we were all poor, grand, her, her mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa, had 10 kids. She was the second oldest. 10 kids, dog. Damn. My grandma was having kids, and my uh, my mom, when my mom was having kids, I got aunts that are the same age. I got an aunt like my sister. <laughs> She's great. a year older than me. I got a, a, an aunt that's two years older Do than me. Do you call her aunt, though? Yeah, she's yeah. my aunt, but we're like sisters. Yeah. We grew up together. We were like like best friends growing up. And, um, um, and as I got older, they were always trying to get me laid. They were always hooking up with their friends. I go, we got another one for you, Edgar. We got another one. Hell so they'd like take pictures of like like my uh, pictures of me and show them to girls at work, and then try to. They were always trying to hook me up. It was awesome. That's great. My aunts were the hookups, dude. They loved it. They enjoyed getting me girls. But anyways, um, my mom is eighteen. She starts dating this. A Porsche mechanic, Mexican Porsche mechanic. That's my okay, stepdad. Okay. He, like Newport Beach, the best mechanic at Newport Beach. So my mom was, you know, we were poor, but she was fine. All right. I'm not going to deny that. Um, she, she nabs a dude like a dude that is making great money, top Porsche mechanic in Newport Beach, but he's an asshole and he's a wife beater oh, and he's shit. a fucking, um, yeah, just a fucking piece of shit, right? So he uh, gets her pregnant. Uh, my grandma and grandpa hate him. They Everyone hates him because he's just a dick. And uh, uh, she she has my brother, Alfonso. Her, his name is Alfonso Bravo. My stepdad's last name is Bravo. That's where I get Bravo. Okay. His name is Alfonso Bravo. My mom this is Maria. And they they end up getting married. She gets pregnant. Nobody in the family likes him. He's a dick. Uh, when my sons or my brothers too, they get a divorce. She beats he beats the shit out of her. Jeez. Wife beat her. So now she's back at my grandma's with my brother. It's just now she's got a she's a, a single mother. Uh, and then she, my mom always wanted to be a singer. She always sings with mariachis. Anytime you see mariachis, my mom gonna get there and start singing. My mom always wanted to be a singer. No matter what, even if you're at a restaurant and they show up, she'll it figure used, out a way to, to get yeah, it. It used, to, it used to embarrass me when I was like 12. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, like, mom, a kid, no, like, mom, not the mom. I'm like this, oh my God. Oh, I'm all pissed off. But then I learned to love it. I was just, I was a fucking asshole. I'm probably still an asshole now, but I was an asshole when I was a kid. Just and and uh, maybe had something to do with this story, but anyways. So now my, my mom's going out. She's living with her mom and dad, with my grandma and grandpa, with all the kids. And now she's partying. My mom liked to party. Well, she's still only like twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah, she liked time, to party. Right? Yeah. My, my mom would party, and and she's seventy. She's still partying. She's the party starter. She's always dancing and always wanting to sing. She's just um, <clears throat> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she goes to a club in Santa Ana and the club promoter, my dad, he's a club promoter, 
for Mexican bands. He'd bring in Mexican bands. Like he was friends with Vicente Fernandez. Okay. My dad was bringing Mexican bands into Santa Ana and into downtown LA. So when he was down in Santa Ana, bringing Mexican bands for all the Mexicans down there, my mom went to the show. He married five kids. No. Promoter, married five kids. You truck driver during the day, delivered industrial size uh, like condiments to kind restaurants. Of trucks that he drive? Not quite a semi. Not but Peterbilt? It was one like a bobtail. He drove uh, like, a, like okay. in between. I don't know, it wasn't Peterbilt, but it was S.C. Rykoff. It was, uh, they're all over L.A. They're green, they're green trucks. They're, I still see them. But that's what he worked for during the day. But at night, he was a club promoter. He meets my mom. And he's like, he's married with five kids. He meets my mom and he's like, oh shit, I gotta get this one VIP. So he just like takes her to the VIP and he's like, you know, falls in love with her. Uh, tells my mom that he's gonna divorce his wife. He got five kids. And um, she's like, you know, okay. He's like super charismatic. She's super charismatic. My, 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 everybody loved my dad. Like he got in with my my uh, grandpa, my mom's dad, and they were just like, you know, he was like 13 years older than my mom, so he'd hang out with with uh, her dad. They'd be like doing tequila shots, playing cards all night. You know what I mean? And so they got along great. He my now all of a sudden my grandpa hates her first husband Alfonso Bravo, but loves my dad Pedro Cano. Cano is actually my real last name, okay. but I was forced to use my stepdad's last name. So, um, <clears throat> uh, so now my this my dad gets my mom an apartment in downtown LA, right there off Hoover and Olympic. It's still there. That apartment complex is still there. It's crazy shit. I lived there till I was three, and I I thought my I had memories of it. I'm like, I wonder if my memories are right. Then when I was like 28, I went back there, boom, I found the spot. I'm like, oh my God, I remember it what exactly. Like? It wasn't even a dream. It's exactly the way I remember. I was three, it was weird. But anyway, so my dad now gets my mom an apartment in downtown LA from Santa Ana. She has a two year old, a two or three year old son. My, my brother's about two or three. He still is married with five kids. He gets my mom pregnant. He's trying to get a divorce, but uh, his wife wouldn't divorce him. She felt like she was going to, she was super religious and thought like she was going to go to hell if she got a divorce. So she wouldn't grant him a divorce. So he decided to torture her and say, Hey, I get to told her all about my mom, his mistress that he's seeing. Oh, announced that I'm going to be gone for a while. My, my mistress, uh, got pregnant and I'm going to have a son. That was me. So my dad was evil. My dad was, evil. he was telling his wife about, the affair he was having with my mom, you know? And my mom the whole time was thinking he was gonna divorce her and they're in love now. She's young, she's like 22 or something at this point. And, uh, but it got to the point where he wasn't, he wasn't getting a divorce. He was like kind of digging having, uh, you know, both, best of both worlds, right? right. So my mom, they, it didn't work out. Um, now, do you do you remember him at all coming around? You said you lived there for three. Dad? Yeah, yeah, I do remember. Him. Do. I remember walking in on him taking a piss, and and you know, you know, there's everyone's got a story like that when you walk in on your dad taking a piss, and his dick just seems like tremendous, <laughs> yeah, like an elephant. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, my yeah. God. as a matter of fact, <laughs> like like a couple of weeks yeah. ago for the first time, my son's ten. And the, for the first time, he caught me running like out of the shower naked, and he and he was just he, I could tell he's shocked. And I was thinking, I go, is this his moment? When did the first time he saw his dad's yeah, dick? Yeah, he'll be telling and, this <laughs> later for sure. He's telling that I, later. I, yeah. I just remember my my dad was standing like this. The door was open, and he's like this, and he looked over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just like, oh, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> so uh, it didn't work out bet my, between my mom and my uh, real dad. So now she's got two kids, two sons, four years apart. And she goes back to Orange County, back to Santa Ana. But he's got six kids now. Yeah. So does he just bail on you and your mom all together and just stay with that family? Or do you? does he... Exactly. So we, she goes back. It didn't work out between them. And now first husband's tracking her down, found out about this new shit. She's been, he's trying to, he's, he wants her back. So, um, she, now my mom is back at my grandma's house. 
uh, she's got two sons now, and we're living at my grandma's. Um, uh, at this point, three, four. Um, he was around. He was doing both families until I was like two or three. Mm-hmm. He was doing it for a while, and um, my mom. And did they still like him, even though he wasn't given the divorce? Who? Your your grandparents. Remember, you said they liked him, but they didn't like stepdad. Did they he, still like what? him? My grandpa and my dad. They just got along. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a common problem for Mexican men, you know, managing uh, multiple families. You know, it's not uncommon. You got a family in Mexico. You got a family. You, know, mm. you, you sneak across the border. That's what my my grandfather. I didn't even think about that. My gran- family here, my, family yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandma and grandpa story how they how they crossed the border. That's another story. But um, now my mom is back at my grandma's house. Grandpa and grandma's house, and uh, I'm like three or four. My, my brother's like seven, and um, they get back together again. First husband Alfonso Bravo, the dick, and my mom's the wife dating, beater. Wife beater. They start dating each other again, and I, I really don't notice. I'm at my grandma's, and I'm hanging out with my aunts. They're like my sister. Where they're, where it's I'm having a great time. Um, and uh, then he, original husband gets mom pregnant again. And this is your sister. This is my sister. So now I'm in the middle. I got an older brother and a younger sister. Interesting. So you, They got the same dad. I was that's just- wow. I was uh, the bastard child. Yeah, in the middle there. Yeah, so now- But wait, were they married again when he got your mom pregnant with your sister? That's where it gets fucked, is once she got pregnant again, they decided to try to make it work again. So now I'm five now when they decided to make it work again. So now at, from between the ages of five and 10, I lived with my stepdad, the shitty okay. mother. And so, is he still that way? Is he still a piece of shit? Oh, yeah. That time? yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a piece of shit. Uh, but he, he let, when I, when I turned 10, he beat my mom up one last time and then bailed to Mexico. And, uh, but, you know, I'll never forget that. Um, there was a lot of crazy shit that happened during. Um, Did that, you the, the ever have years. a physical altercation with him, dude? I mean, you um, had to at some point start feeling your own strength, and he know. made a lot of money. He was a uh, like I said, was he, he was a, a Porsche dude? character. Yeah, uh, n- not tall. He was like probably five seven. Five six, but he did lift weights and he was stocky. Yeah. He was into lifting weights. Porsche mechanic. Um, um, had some white friends, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he was blowing up, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you got a white friend? People be tripping yeah. down. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so be the, from the ages of five to 10, I'm living with my stepdad and I'm forced to use the name Bravo. Okay. In school, because my mom was like, she didn't want nobody to know. She didn't want, she's like, you're fucking Bravo now. I so, see. and back then, there were, they didn't keep records that well, because my birth certificate says Edgar Alberto Cano. There's no Bravo in it at all. But with that birth certificate, Edgar Alberto Cano, my social security says Edgar Bravo. My mom just went, to, when we signed up to school, she just put, you're Bravo now, bang. She goes, nobody needs to know shit. I'm like, damn, I hate this motherfucker and I got to use his name? Damn. Fuck this that, mother. Yeah, I hate it, Bravo. I'll bet. I'm like, and it, it, as a kid, Bravo is a, is a shitty name because anytime people, kids are so stupid um, <clears throat> in what they think is funny. And like they say, Bravo, hooray, yay, Bravo. Nonstop. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, dude, that's so not funny. But it was annoying as fuck. Uh, out in at the <clears throat> first day of school, is really the only time the teacher would call out your name because after that she would, you'd have a seating assignment and she would take roll and she would just look at your shit. She wouldn't call anybody's name out. But that first day she's gonna call your name out. And I was so self conscious of Bravo. I'm like, what a dumb fucking name! I want to change my name. So I <laughs> um, I transferred myself to a, a white school and used my without my mom's knowledge and used my original name. I'm gonna fuck this. I'm not gonna use this motherfucking Bravo name. And I transferred myself to a. Uh, a white junior high. Yeah, and then when my mom found out, she never went to no fucking PTA meetings or nothing. She didn't give a, she never went to my school once. But when she found out, 
I'm at a new school. My last name is Kano, not Bravo. My mom, dude. <laughs> she grabbed me by the fucking ear, dude, and dragged me like a caveman. Dude, she did. She did. She went inside that school. She goes, show me where this fucking school is. We went to the white side of town, almost in Tustin and Orange. How'd you even get away with that? My aunt lived in the in uh, in um, in the area, that district. So I used my aunt's um, address. Address, and then I just signed everything. I just forged everything. Because when you when you sign your mom's name. When you ditch class and you have to have a doctor's it note, matches. or yeah, it just, it fucking it it's matches. the same shit, dog. Fuck we can yeah. go to court. You want to go to court? It's, it's the same one. <laughs> but anyways, when my mom found out, she dragged me to school. She fucking kicked down the principal's <laughs> office. She went, whoa, push. Then she goes, where are your fucking files, dog? She'll pull the, we got to change his fucking name right now. He's not Kano, he's Bravo. And I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. My mom freaked out. <laughs> so she let you stay at the school though? You just had to yes, have the last yes, name? Yeah, yeah, but I had to keep Bravo. Um, now let me ask you this question. I know we're going to jump ahead for just a moment here. When did you finally accept Bravo? When did you embrace Bravo? When did it feel good Dude, to be Bravo? I hated it so much. But my step, my real dad, you know, he didn't he didn't really give a fuck anyway. I'm like, how could you not give a fuck about it? I, I would see him like once, once um, a year. And he'd come by and show up to my school, give me a hundred dollar bill in front of all my my friends at school. I'd be I'd, like, I'm in like uh, second grade, I got a hundred dollar bill. So he would do that. And he was only in town to bang my mom. <laughs> uh, he just wanted to hang out with my mom. Yeah. So he would show up, he go, get all you, you guys, you wanna go to the movies? I go, hell yeah, I wanna go to the movies. You wanna go see Shogun Assassin? I go, hell yeah, I wanna go see, you want all your friends to go too? I go, yeah, go get all your friends. So he'd get all his friends and, um, or I, he'd get all my, we'd get all my friends and he'd pay for everybody. We'd go to movies, see Shogun Assassin. And meanwhile, he's hanging out with my mom. You know, he'd take us all to Disneyland and he's just so he could hang out with my mom. He was, uh, you know, he didn't give a shit about me. And I was like, damn, you know what? As long, it, as long as he's like paying for all this shit, going to movies, I'm like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. He ain't like, I was like, yeah, you ain't shit, but you want to give me some shit? You can give me some shit. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to give me, I went to uh, his truck, I went to work with him one day and we did a truck delivery all the way down to San Diego and back. Did that once. He showed me, oh, here's my son. Oh, only time we did that. And uh, he'd come by me now and then. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but. How did he feel about you being Bravo? He didn't give a shit. He, he never care. even brought it up. He didn't even bring it up. But the day Bravo um, left uh, the family, me and my brother, we coming back from a Boy Scout trip. We're, there was like Mexican Boy Scouts, man. And um, we went to like Joshua Tree and shit. And when we got back, she was beat up. We're like, we're in our Boy Scout uniforms. Like, what happened? She and she she explained to us what happened. And her hair's all fucked up. Black eyes. She's all fucked Man, up. He she looked. He beat her up. Damn. He dragged her God, out. out. He dragged her by the hair to the front yard. And um, they they called the cops. They arrested him and everything. He got arrested, but. Me and my brother, that was his real dad. And my brother, my brother didn't like him. Right. And that's that was his, his real biological dad. So father. And your when, sister. When uh, when our mom was telling us this, we were like, holy shit. So he's not coming back at all? <laughs> <laughs> you just take one for she the team, mom. She's like, no, no. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, a hanji? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, mom, love you, mom. Oh, you need anything? And then me and my brother walked down the hallway. Dude, <laughs> yeah, and we, yeah. we got in our room. Dude, we were jumping in our fucking bed in super slow-mo, dude. Go, we knew we were free, dog. We knew we were free. That guy, that guy was a tyrant. Like yeah. we couldn't do shit. Like, now was he ever hurting you kids? Did he ever take beat you guys, or is he just taking out on your mom? And what was he a drinker? What was his thing? He, he drank and uh, he he smoked weed, and um, he was he. Uh, <clears throat> I could understand where he's coming from a little bit, though. You know what I mean? I wasn't his real kid, and he had to support me. You like. Yeah, uh, I, I get it, you know, I get it a little bit, you know, uh, he, I never called him five years between the ages of five and 10, never called him dad. He never called me son, 
Never said we never, but he was, he would do stupid shit. Like I just wanted to get to school in the morning. So I'd wake up early. My brother was always waking up late. He's always like, I want to get the fuck out. I wanted to go to my grandma's house on the way to school and watch him fucking land of the lost. Yeah, Sig yeah. Sig Sigmund and the sea monsters. And then I go to school. So I, I got up early, that, go up early, time. go to my grandma's, eat cereal there. Cause it's on the way to school in my grandma's house. She lived right down the street. Um, so, uh, I'd be up and he was up and he, and he didn't just beat me for anything. Like if I did something fucked up, he would fuck me up. Okay. But I was scared to death of him. But like, if we were eating just like this, he would just do this to me and I'd be eating my cereal and he'd just stare at me. He would just stare at me. Wouldn't even just, wouldn't be eating. He would just, just stare a hole through me. And then I'd get up and the kitchen's over here and here's the doorway and he would get up and block it. He would. Oh, he wouldn't say shit. So then I would go out the front door all the way around the side of the house through the back door just to put my fucking uh, Fruit Loops bowl away. You know what I mean? It was like that. So it was like that. Like he was like that. He wasn't like just beating the shit out of me, but he was just a lot of mental shit. Yeah. And <clears throat> one day, uh, me and my brother used to steal NFL pencils from the department store and then sell them for 10 cents at school. Mm -hmm. We used to hustle, you know, what do you, what do you need? Cincinnati Bengals? Boom, <laughs> here you go. 10 cents, bam. We, we used to make some extra cash, you know, and <clears throat> one day, but we used to steal the pencils. Yeah, of course. We steal you ain't them. Any money if you don't we steal them and then you sell them at school. So one day, me and my brother, you know, we, um, <clears throat> We, we need to uh, restock our inventory. And <laughs> we were at a department store, Newberry's in Santa Ana, and uh, he gets caught. I didn't get caught. He got caught because we're not going in together. We go separate. Right, we went, yeah. boom, and we're just bam. He gets caught. I fucking leave the store. I'm like, oh shit, he's fucking busted. Oh damn, damn, he's busted. They took him upstairs to the office where they, you know, where they talked to you. And then, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm waiting outside the store going, fuck, 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 what's gonna happen? Shit, my stepdad's gonna fuck us. Oh, now we gave him a reason. He just, he needed a reason. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. And I'm waiting out there and it's getting late. And then a guy comes out and goes, you, you, uh, are you with Alfonso Bravo? And I'm like, e yeah. He goes, his parents already picked him up. I'm like, oh <laughs> <-uh>. shit. <laughs> so I run home. <laughs> dude, I run home, dude. I'm running home fucking full clip, dude. <laughs> I'm just running oh, full man, clip, you're running like the I'm wind. like, what's gonna happen? <laughs> what's gonna happen? Is the he gonna, whole is he gonna throw? Is he gonna throw me under the bus? <laughs> is he gonna fucking? So, dude, I, I get, I get to the house. Oh my god! I look in the living room and I hear them wait. It, it, all there's, there's like a living room when you walk in, and then you, you make a right, and then there's a long hallway, and our room is at the end. And then there's a room in between and then another hallway. So there's like all the doors were open. So I could see all the way down the hallway. So I walked into the living room and I went, oh shit. My brother was like without a shirt like this against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and my stepdad, do you remember that scene? Do you remember that scene in The Shining where there's like some old, like some weird shit's going on and they're, they're, I don't know who it is, but someone's going through the hallway and they open the door and there's like a man like sucking like some furry dick. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes like that. And it, it just, it was like that, dude, like scary shit. He's whipping my brother. Whipping you know? him. Yeah. Whipping him like fucking roots. Shit. Stuff. He's ripping him, roots. ripping him. And then, and I'm down the hallway and he looks like that. And he goes. Oh, God damn. <sighs> He looked at me like, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> so he could. Like, he's thanking he just got, you. Dude, he just got done whipping his own son. Yeah. Like a slave. You're gonna get that. Extra my my brother, dude, he, he was made fun of at school in PE when he had to take off his shirt. Dude, he had. Dude, it was that bad. Dude, he fucking whipped the shit out of him. So he, as soon as he sees me, he does that. I was like, oh man, this is it's like fucking Christmas for him. First time ever. 
My mom fucking jumped in between us. He just went to grab me and I'm like, oh shit. My mom jumped in like fucking big John McCarthy, dude. She jumped in front of us and fucking pulled us apart. She goes, nah. And he didn't even fight it because he knew. It's like, she's doing me a favor because I'll probably kill him and go to jail. So my stepdad, because my mom said, no fucking way. After what you did to your own son, you're going to kill this motherfucker. You will. Yeah, you will. So apparently yeah. uh, my, my brother told him that we both did it. So he just couldn't wait to whip my ass. But my mom fucking stepped in, cock blocked. And then she whipped my ass. I was like, <laughs> I was like crying instantly. But going, yeah, I was like, I was like, <laughs> oh, I was it's like, my oh, turn, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh, mommy, stop me. You know, Too so, uh, yeah, that, that was, <laughs> that was scary. And he didn't pursue it. He under, he understood that, uh, what that meant. My mom just fucking saving my life. So he splits. And then what? We're wild on the streets. Me and my brother. You can't, but my mom's mom, always, my mom's bring working. another guy in or no, for perm, like, no, no, settle her, down my mom, done. every day she said, but I'll she still never what? get married. Her fucking Late twenties, early thirties, uh, early thirties, yeah. early thirties, and uh, she was all about "I will never get married okay. again." I will never get married, Doc. and she never did. Never got married. Almost one guy. Never got married, and would always talk about it. And then one guy almost got her to fucking reconsider. Nico, Nico got her. He was like fucking. So now me and my my my, I'm like. 13 and my brother is 17 and we haven't had a dad it's just my mom and us and we're on the streets we're fucking thieving we're trying to fucking we're trying to just hustle and survive my mom didn't have any money she made 150 dollars a week trying to support three kids doing what what was she doing she did like electronic stuff like you know an assembly line putting mm -hmm. electronics together and shit like that she worked hard she worked hard and she loved overtime if she can get to work on saturday oh, I mean, oh she loved that shit oh man and then on fridays every goddamn friday when she got home from work 5 30 we're going to mcdonald's dog we're going to mcdonald's that was just heaven yeah man. it was just like pfft. McDonald's was, was everything to us. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. I know I get run down. I don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel like talking to anyone. I don't feel like going anywhere. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause, and any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. You know I'm a big believer in therapy. I think everyone should be out there talking to somebody, looking for some answers, getting a little bit of help, all right? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. The Honeydew listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash honeydew. That's betterhelp.com slash honeydew for 10% off your first month. Cooler weather makes it easy to miss signs of dehydration like overheating or perspiration, which means it's even more important to keep your body hydrated. Every day, I start my day off with liquid IV. Try to get one in the middle of the day, too. We keep them here at the studio. All the guests use them. Kirsten, we all use them over here. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. And with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, it's made with premium ingredients. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDOW at checkout. That's 15% off of anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEYDOW at liquidiv.com. Again, that's promo code HONEYDOW at liquidiv.com. 
Com. Do it today, y'all. Stay hydrated. Crowd Health puts your health care back in your hands. Cut out the middleman, save money, and fund your health care costs without relying on big government or big insurance companies. Let's be honest. The insurance model is broken. Crowd Health has a better way to fund your health care costs. Pay one low monthly total to fund your account. Your monthly subscription helps fund health care costs of the entire Crowd Health community. You can see any doctor you want. There are no deductibles, exclusions, or co-pays. Only pay the first $500 of any healthcare event. The CrowdHealth community takes care of the rest. CrowdHealth puts the community back in community healthcare. Take charge of your healthcare today with CrowdHealth. Open enrollment is the only time you can hit eject on the broken system without penalty. So don't wait. And for a limited time, join for just $99 per month for your first six months when you use promo code HONEYDEW at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, promo code HONEYDEW. CrowdHealth is not health insurance. It's a totally different way of paying for health care. Term and conditions may apply. Now, let's get back to the do. So what's happening to you? You're getting in trouble? You getting locked up? Are you staying out of trouble? Like are you just getting by <sighs> just enough? I never <clears throat> I never got locked up as um as a teenager. <laughs> 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 well said. Well said. No, no, but really I've only been uh arrested and put in jail once. And that was just for like 10 hours. I got it's a long story. That's another story. Uh <laughs> but uh I didn't do anything wrong. I had a gun on me, but uh I was working and I could I, I used to manage a chain of check cashing stores. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I, You're I, crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's scary as fuck. I had a friend that was a bail bondsman, and these people used to come in like that shit, and I'd be like, mm, mm, mm. They're all uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, during the riots, dude. Mm. I almost got killed during the riots. Damn, because, dude. Yeah, yeah, the riots, man. Nine, so man, I don't even I mean, there's just so much to uh I, basically through throughout all that shit, um, once my stepdad was gone, me and my brother were wild on the streets. We're wild on the streets. And then, you know, we we're all into rock and, and metal. And uh, I wanted to be a rock star or a football player. That's it. That's all it was. Football okay. player or rock star. And <clears throat> as a uh, the football um, bug got into me, uh, like, when I was eight, you know, nine, when the Rams uh, went to the Super Bowl against the Pittsburgh Steelers, I was a Steelers fan at first, just because they were so popular. And uh, I, rem- I drew a picture of the Super Bowl, like, like, like a, I can't draw worth a shit, but I drew stick figures, and I was so proud of it. Of like, you know, a pass that Lynn Swan caught, mm-hmm. in, you know. Do uh, you remember that Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I, per- I think it was Vince, Vince, Vince Ferragamo was playing quarterback for the Rams. Uh, But anyways, um, and then my brother, four years older than me, and just like uh, a large percentage of siblings, the older brother sometimes uh, uh, gets off on uh, humiliating a sibling, you know what I mean? And he liked doing that, you know. My brother liked doing that. He he loves me to death, and he's proved proved to me that he loves me. But he also made me cry, and he also uh, made me pray – to God that, you know, that he would die and shit like that. You know what I mean? I'd be like, I hope, please kill him. Please, <laughs> please kill, kill him. him. Please kill him. God, God, kill him. You know, I would, <laughs> I would pray to God to have my brother killed. Uh, he would embarrass me. He's like, you know, we're a bunch of fucking kids on the street and I'm like, on the, uh, I'm hanging with the youngest uh, of the crew and he's older. So they're like, make fun. They're like making fun of the young kids. But, um, <clears throat> I played Pee Wee football at nine when I was nine years old. Um, I had a, a friend who uh, had uh, parents, both parents together on the other side of town and they uh, we became friends and they paid for my football. So all of a sudden I'm in like Pee Wee and we're playing tackle. It's weird because Pee Wee football is like you're 
third, fourth, and fifth grade, and you're playing with fucking helmet and shoulder pads and yeah. everything. But when you get into junior high, sixth, seventh, and eighth, now it's flag football. It's not tackle football in junior high out here. So uh -oh. um, when I played tackle football, everybody's the same size. Everybody's the same size at nine. You don't start really separating until you're like 11, 12, 13. That's when you start, you know, you start figuring out who's the short guys and who, right. the, who the big guys are. So at nine, shit, I was playing defensive lineman and middle linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> so you get delusional. Yeah. You know, you get delusional. Like, shit, like, I felt like, and I was pretty good. At nine, I was going after my, I loved football. And uh, so I thought, okay, I'm going to be a football player or a rock star. It's going to be one of them. Could Whichever one comes or first. Was it an instrument or are you going to sing or? Uh, in the beginning, I was playing drums because nobody on the block wanted to play drums. And, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll fucking play drums. We need a band. So it was more about drums. I didn't want to be a singer. My voice sucks. Um, I know, I knew I couldn't be a lead singer or anything like that. I do, I do background vocals and shit. I'll do like a line here and there in, in the music I produce. Cause I never stopped producing music. I am about to put an album out real soon. Oh yeah. But, uh, but um, uh, back then it was just like, I, I saw Kiss meets the phantom of the park on yeah. nbc at eight i saw that show yeah. like and i saw all those fans screaming for them i go i want people screaming for me like that you know what i mean and uh so i want to either either a rock star or football player so when i get into sixth grade sixth grade is where uh everything started to change um i got the first junior high i went to uh, was mostly um, like you at junior high. You had to claim a gang. You don't have to be in the gang. You don't have to gang bang. You don't have to kill nobody. I'm gonna ask you, but about you have gang to claim. Presence, you have to I claim. Think. When we're on our block, everybody's listening to Rush, Kiss, Def Leppard. We're listening to like Ozzy, Van Halen, The Police. But when you go to school, you got to pretend like you got you got to dress the part. There's like gang banger clothes, and on your peachy folder, you better write either Middle Side or F True. One of them. And what were you guys supposed to and do? I, and I, either F Troop or Middle Side, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I'm like, I'm going to claim no gang. My brother said, just fucking do it. Cause my brother had to claim Middle Side. You had to know the sign and everything. Boom, boom. You know? And, but he wasn't a gang banger. As soon as he got, he would go to, to school in like Cholo weed shirts or like, um, I don't know if you know, know, but they're like gray and black stripes across like this. They have brown ones and they have black and gray ones. I think they're called weeds shirts, but um, uh, cholos and gangbangers. Well, my brother used to wear, he wasn't in a gang, but he would claim it. And if he had to fight, my brother could fight, he would, but he just, we just want to get back to our block where we could be ourselves. Right. You know, uh, and I didn't want to play that part. So it was weird because in elementary, you don't have to claim no gang, but now sixth grade, I'm like, fuck that. And I was dressing like a surfer-ish mm -hmm. uh, with lightning bolt shirts, Ocean Pacific. You remember that Ocean Pacific? Yeah, oh yeah, OP. OP? Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I would wear. And uh, the gang bangers at the school um, would uh, like, man, why are you acting white? You Mexican, man. You Mexican, like the black guys would tell me that shit too. And I'm like, no, I'm just, I just, I'm just a me, you know? And uh, like I said, I had two aunts that were older than me. So now I'm in sixth grade. I have an aunt that's in seventh grade and an aunt that's in eighth grade. And they're, uh -huh. they're all chola out. They're all playing the game. They're not chola out. Your but when they go to school. Seventh and eighth grade. <laughs> oh, that's real shit. Hilarious. <laughs> that's real shit. I got one aunt in the sun. I thought you were going to say her age. Like she's 20. He said seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> that is too much. So I'm in sixth grade. <laughs> and she's in, yeah. Patty's in seventh. Alice is in eighth. Aunt, Aunt Patty and, and Aunt Alice. All yeah, right. and they're super popular, beautiful, but they're dressing like a chola. They play the game. They crease their their cords, and they're they're dressing like cholas at school. But they're not gangbangers. But you got to claim it. It's kind of like a fashion almost. Okay. They just you just go with it. It's fashion. You know, no one will fuck with you. And uh, because. Patty and Alice were so popular at that school. Like their girlfriends, like, oh, look at their nephew. Look at Edgar, the little, they're like Patty's nephew. Oh. So the seventh grade girls, are th they thought like, oh. You know, so I started dating a seventh grader. I'm a sixth grader. That's a big deal. Dude, seventh grade chicks never date sixth grade dudes. That big just doesn't deal. happen. 
but since Pat, my aunts were so popular, they thought it was a way to get to closer to them. So I'm dating this girl named Sabrina. Um, and, uh, and I'm in sixth grade. And meanwhile, I try out for the fucking flag football team and they cut me like right away. Like immediately they cut me. They go, this motherfucker way too slow. I didn't realize how slow I was. They're like, damn. And I tried out in vans. Everyone, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was running over the 40 yard dash yeah, yeah. in vans. <laughs> and I was slow as fuck. I had good hands and I had moves, dude. I could juke a motherfucker. I just have no speed, no explosion. I'm gonna make you miss, but if you just turn around and not give up, you can, <laughs> you can catch me. You can catch me for sure. I'm, I'm not outrunning <laughs> nobody. They're not even, I'm not outrunning girl. Girls are faster than me. Everybody's faster than me. But I can catch, dog. I got good hands, just slow as fuck. But um, so they cut me. I'm like, oh shit. So I spun it in my own head that y'all's are pussies. You guys are playing flag football. I don't do that shit. I play tackle. I just did p a pee wee football, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I saw it. I'm like, yeah, yeah wait yeah. till we get to high school, ninth yeah. grade, and I'm gonna show you what's up. Once the helmet comes on and the shoulder pads, shit. Okay, keep playing this pussy ass fucking flag football. That's how I saw it. So I I, I put okay, football gonna be on hold until I get to high school because okay. it's bullshit. So I break up with Sabrina for a sixth grader, Margaret. Sabrina loses her shit. No fucking sixth grader gonna break up with me. You're lucky I even dated your stupid ass. I only dated you because your fucking aunt. You know, so she's pissed. Your aunt. Yeah. <laughs> who's got science class with me. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. So now she's like sends goons to fuck fuck with me and beat my ass. Now there was a fucking hit on me in sixth grade. I'm like, oh shit. First, the guys couldn't wait. To have a reason to fuck me up because I'm, you know, I'm a Mexican guy dressing in, in Ocean Pacific shirts, and I'd have like a like a mini ghetto blaster with only one speaker. I couldn't afford the one with the yeah, two the speaker, one. the two, yeah. but the one with the one you could buy a Gemco. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> <laughs> like eighteen bucks. I yeah. So I would, but I would still have it on my shoulder. I'd be walking during recess. I would just go out in the fields and just be listening to Ozzy and Judas Priest and shit. And they hated me. Oh, they're like, this guy is is uh, not playing the game. So once I broke up with Sabrina and these guys took me behind the fucking PE building were about to fuck me up. I start crying and shit. And um, they felt sorry for me, you know, because uh, uh, I just fucking like I wasn't going to fight. There was like seven of them and they wanted to beat me the fuck up. And I just started crying so much. They just left me alone. And I'm like, oh, shit. I got to transfer myself to another school. <laughs> <laughs> you got mom dude, I got to get the fuck out of here, dude. I go, I got to get out of here. So I had an aunt that lived in this one school at the edge of Santa Ana by Tustin and Orange. It's still Santa Ana called Willard Intermediate. And they, either, they had a lot of white people and Mexicans that were whitewashed, right? No gangs. There's no gangs at this school. I go, I got to get to that fucking school for seventh grade. So I use my aunt's uh, um, address and I fill out all the paperwork. All I did is tell my mom, I go, mom, next next year, I'm going to go to a great school. It's all the way by Dustin. She goes, oh, okay. She was like, she thought it was great news. And uh, that's all. She didn't say, do I need to sign anything? She didn't, she's got, a, she's got her job to worry about. So. Then she freaked out when she found out I'm Kano, I'm Edgar Kano at this new school. She freaks out, busts down the principal's door, gets all the paperwork in order, embarrasses the shit out of me. But now I'm at this new school. And now I'm at a school where I have no fucking friends, dude. I went from being like, uh, um, like too fucking popular in sixth grade to now nobody knows me. I have one friend there from first grade Lee Mays, like Jeff Spicoli. You know Jeff Spicoli yeah. from Fast Times? Of course. He was Jeff Spicoli. Okay. Long hair. He had it cropped up on top. Super metal, dude. It's it's like 1983, 84. And he's super Jeff Spicoli, surfer metal, dude. Half Indian, half Mexican. And, but he never comes to school. So when he's not there, I got to sit at lunch and at recess, like by myself, because everyone's got their own cliques. And I'm not going to go up to the clique and go, hey, I'm the new kid. And I had um, too much pride and I was a big pussy. 
it was just too like, dude, what am I going to say? I'm going to, so I just sat by myself and that's, that hurts so much, man. Sitting by your fucking self. And then everyone, everybody knows who the loner is. Yeah. Everybody knows they don't have no friends. But when Lee would fucking just show up to school and not smoke weed today and just show up to school like a responsible human being so I could have someone, to, I just need someone to sit next to me and everything's cool. Whenever he, got, when he, whenever he did go to school, Lee Mays, he would just sit, sit next to me. I felt great. I'm like, we're talking, we're just bullshitting about fucking, you know, Black Sabbath, you know, yeah. Kiss. We're just talking metal and shit. I'm like, fuck, thank God he's here. Because d- during school, I, I don't, you know, no one gives a fuck. You're just sitting at a, at a desk that you that was assigned to you, and you know nobody knows who the loner is. But at lunch, they know who the loner is. They they get everybody out of the school, and you're in the lunch area, and they only let people in to to, to go to use the restroom inside. So I always use the Lee didn't show up. Lee Mays didn't show up. I'm using the fucking restroom, and I'm gonna take a long ass shit. <laughs> yeah, and, you yeah, know, I'm gonna yeah, kill as yeah. much time. I would just be sitting there, and there was no internet. There's no phone. You no. just sit there, dude. You just sit there, look at my folders. I'm just like fuck, killing as much time as possible because it's excruciating sitting by yourself at lunch. It's fucking excruciating. Everyone's having a good time. They're all in their clicks. And uh, and at, after second period every day is when they they hang up the list of people that that didn't make it to, to school and I'd always check that shit. I go up to the list. I'm like, fuck, he's not here. God damn it, you fucking. Oh, so you would know. Yeah, so I would know. Go, god damn it, you know. And then um, I'm just a total fucking loan. Everybody knows it, and it's excruciating. I just need Lee Mays there as long as he's there. And then in junior high, every junior high got one girl who just developed her titties quick. Every junior high got one angel bade, big double Ds. And then there's one that has full Cs, Denise Rosen. She had full Cs. And then everyone else, no titties. Remember that? Junior yeah. high, nobody oh, had titties. Yeah. Nobody had titties in junior high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nobody had titties in junior high. It might be different now with all the hormones that they're putting in the, in the milk, but back then, only one girl had boobs. Two girls. Double D, Angel Babe. Double Denise D. Re- Double D. Angel Babe. And she was pretty, too. So she's the most sought-after girl in uh, the school. And the most popular guy in school is a half-white, half-Samoan named Donovan Mauga. Superstar, totally whitewashed, half white, half Samoan, but wears all the latest preppy clothes, super athlete, fastest guy in school, uh, second fastest. Him and Royal Wilbon, uh, uh, they're like there's two black guys in that school and they were fully whitewashed. Royal Wilbon w- was fucking insane fast, but Donovan Malga, he was like, he was just the coolest motherfucking guy in, in, in school. And um, he was uh, making moves on Angel Babe. He was falling in love with Angel Babe. He was making some moves. And um, Lee fucking Mays was making moves on Angel Babe, too. When he, when he was barely there. Yeah, but they had a class together. And now Lee Mays is making moves on Angel Babe. Angel Babe kind of thought Lee Mays was kind of cute. And Donovan Mauga found out. Donovan, I swear to God, this is all true. This is middle school again, junior high? We're in seventh grade seventh now, grade, middle okay. school. Middle. We're all in seventh. Donovan Mauga, Mauga found out Lee Mays was making moves on her. He During recess, he went up to him, took him down, mounted him. I didn't even know what the mount was. I just said, dude, he sat on his chest and just beat the no. shit out while I was standing there. I didn't Like a shit. Christmas story, dude, just I, fucking dude, wailing. Donovan Mauga <laughs> terrified me. He was terrifying. Number one athlete, and now he's sitting on my only friend's chest and just raining like, dude, it was like Patrick Smith and Scott Morris, UFC 2. It was brutal. Opened up his face. He was fucked up. And everyone's just cheering on him. By the time the the principal got through, fuck, they pulled them both off. And, um, And I just stood there. I didn't do shit. I was just terrified of Donovan Malka. This guy was, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? You're going <laughs> to get beat that. too. That's you, what the fuck you're you going to do. That's what you get for fucking, what, Angel Bay, dog? You're going to go with Angel Bay? What are you thinking? 
And um, after school, I finally, after they let uh, Lee Mays out, he came out. I was talking to him in front of the school, and he had, dude, he had like a Motley Crue, those aviator shades on. <laughs> Long hair, dude, he looked, he could have been in a band in seventh grade. Long hair, it was all cropped up. And he had these big rock star glasses on, but you could see, under, like he had the, he was trying to cover up <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the fucking scar. Like, dude, he ripped his face apart. He was all fucked up and he's just standing there. I'm like, what's gonna happen? He's all, the worst possible news ever he can give me. The worst fucking possible news. It's like, my mom's gonna transfer me to another school. I'm like, no! <laughs> no! We can work this out! We, we can, can make this good out. again. Come on, dog! Let me talk to your mom. Where's your mom? Let me go, crazy. No, we can't do this. No, dude. He goes, no, man, I gotta go. I go, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. We can make this good. This poor girl's big titties dripping. Fuck. Boy, crazy. And he got his ass Now he's transferred. <laughs> now he's gone. My only friend. So now it's fucking death, dog. Lunch is, it's exclusive. It's, oh, it's a nightmare. God, I'm like living man. in a twilight zone when it's lunch. <laughs> that's my worst. That's my least favorite part of my life. Oh, Of man, my life. Man, that sucks. So. During that, I, I mean, all Is that, that shit's right? going on. That's all, the least favorite part that back dude, then, that moment. Dude, being alone yeah. and everyone knowing you're alone everybody. in yeah. front of everybody. It, 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 forget about like, you don't, a kid that, that age doesn't know what's going on in the world, has no perspective. There's people in Liberia, like kids that like are eating hearts and shit and like killing people and seeing insane stuff. But as a kid, you don't know that shit. You're just in your little, it, to, to me, that was hell. Yeah. I was in hell. And meanwhile, I tried out for the football team there too. Donovan Maga star. Dude, they cut me even quicker. <laughs> dude, I, they quicker than you they, can dude, run. They, <laughs> you're already cut, dog. <laughs> you might as well just go home right now. <laughs> so, but I told them, you know what I told all my friends back at the neighborhood? I told them that I made the team. As second string quarterback, I didn't want to get too crazy. I said, like, "Yeah, I made it second string," but they they kicked me off the team because I got in a fight. Just made it all up, made it up. I couldn't face my friends on the block. They were still going to the other school, the gangbanger school. Right, right. I said, "Yeah, I made the team," but God damn it, they cut me because I got in a fight. I was second string quarterback, dog. <laughs> uh, they were gonna give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm a, I'm a dude. I'm such a loser, dude. I'm a loser in seventh grade at Willard, and I'm I'm such a loser. I had to lie to all my friends and my, and my brother, everybody, my family. I made the team, but they cut me because I got in a fight. Oh, you told your family. That I told too. everybody, okay. dude. Everybody. Uh, so now I'm, I'm, Lee Mays is fucking gone. Donovan Malga is like with, with Angel Babe. Now you see him walking around and shit. Donovan Malga, Angel Babe. So, and I'm like the biggest loser ever. Everybody knows that. Like, I don't have a friend now. Everyone knew that. Like, that was my only friend. And then in drama, I took drama. Uh, I just wanted like the easiest. Learn like, a lot yeah, about you. Yeah. So in drama, I start like making friends with Nicole Anaya, cheerleader, hot. And in drama, we're like, there's one time where we're like all supposed to get in a circle and hold hands, and I'm holding hands with her. My hands are sweaty as fuck. Her hands are sweaty. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm holding hands with Nicole and I. She's like cheerleader. And she, her ex boyfriend in sixth grade, Donovan Malka. Nah. Yes. <laughs> Dude, you were while stuff. I was at the other school, while I was at that other school in sixth grade, they were dating. Now I'm a in sixth grade. moving through this school. Huh? They broke up. Now he's with Angel Bay. So I'm like thinking, oh shit. You used to go out with Donovan Malga? He goes, yeah, but that was last year. I'm like, oh fuck. Oh, I guess, you know, that was last year. And uh, he's got Angel Bay now. Hmm. Okay. So then we just. Little by little, she became my girlfriend and nobody knew and I would walk her home. She's super popular. I'm the biggest loser of the school. Now I'm secretly dating like top three girls in the school. And uh, 
I thought, okay, Donovan Ma, like I was like in the back of my head, I'm like, he, how, how could he get mad? He's with Angel Bed. How could he get mad? But when we started just holding hands at school and walking her to class, and everyone was just like, I'm walking down the well, hallway. Now you're doing now you got her books, more comfortable. Ho- hold, oh, yeah, holding her books, now. holding her hand, and she's proud. She's like into it too. She's like, I'm dating the biggest loser in the school, and, and I don't give a shit. She had she had a lot of courage. She was brave. You then just people- said I'm dating the biggest <laughs> loser in school, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> dude she was uh, brave dude. She was- <laughs> so dude i could feel the stairs walking around school people were like what the f- what what is going on nobody could and it was such a surprise to everybody that donovan malga it dropped his stock the fact that she was dating me <laughs> <laughs> lowered Lord his it. value, dog. Uh, so he couldn't it. take it. He couldn't take it. So he was like, he felt like the only thing he could do was kick my ass. So he started telling everybody that he was going to fuck me up. And dude, I was terrified. People would come on. I'll never forget Greg Ailes. And, dude, I, just to let you know, man, uh, Donovan is planning on fucking you up. Just letting you know. And I was like, uh, uh. Thinking about what he did to Lee Mays, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, Donovan Mog is gonna fucking kill me. It's your three o'clock he's high right here. Oh, dude, he's right. Re- and and do you was, know when it's coming, or I is don't it, know it when it's coming. coming. Any uh, oh, he was, god, dude, he was letting it drag out. <laughs> I was like, please just do he ain't it. Like, this Saturday, dude, he, no, no, no. <laughs> he goes. People okay. just kept saying Donovan's gonna fuck you up. So he had people tell, get in my ear. Donovan told me to tell you he's gonna fuck you up. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my God. And um, uh, uh, in seventh grade in English class, we had this assignment to write a letter to ourselves that we're going to read after we graduate high school. Okay. So we write out like what's going on in our lives today in seventh grade. And then our put, you know, self addressed a- envelope, send it to my grandma's house. You put an address that, you know, is probably going to be there when you graduate. And then they send you the letter and then you read, you're like 18 years old and you're reading some shit you wrote when you were 14. That's cool. So in that letter, dude, in that letter, I was like, Donovan's going to kill me. <laughs> That's in that letter. Dude, it's in the letter. <laughs> you were terrified. I go, I'm like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen for sure. I'm just waiting for him to do it. I'm terrified. Dude, I wrote it all out. It was like a diary of like with truth. And then, um, one day, I'm in the bathroom, and I'm taking a leak, and I zip up my pants, and I turn around, and I'm about to walk out the bathroom. Donovan and his best friend, Jaime, they both walk in, and we pass each other. And I'm walking out of the bathroom, and they're walking in, and right there, I just stopped, and I said, let's get this fucking over with. All right. No one's around. I went back into the bathroom, just looked in the mirror. So there's like a mirror that's like, it goes down diagonal like that. And then behind you are the the, the stalls. So mm-hmm. they're pissing and facing that way. And I'm, you know, you walk You're around. Watching your back. I'm just combing. Yeah. I'm just watching them take a piss. I'm looking at their backs, boom. And they're like, Jaime's like, Jaime's like, fuck them up, dude. Fuck them up. Fuck them up. Oh, you hear and him then, saying Yeah, that. and then Don's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the shit up. Dime, the, this is perfect. No one's going to say this is perfect. And then just shut the fuck up. And I'm just like this, combing my hair, just waiting to get fucking just sucker punch. Just combing my hair, going, let's just get this over. This is perfect in here. No one's going to see shit. Boom. And I'm calling. I just didn't want to have it done in front of my girlfriend. You know what I mean? I go, that that's hard to come back from. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then they just walked out of the bathroom and left. And I'm just sitting there combing my hair. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Turns out Angel Bay found out Donovan Malga was mad because his ex-girlfriend was was uh, going out with me now. She's like, why would you be mad w- want to fuck him up? Yeah. She goes, if you fuck him up, we're done. Oh. Angel Bade saved my life. Fuck yeah. She saved my life. She said, you leave him alone or we're done. Found oh, that out. great, dude. Oh, dude, she saved my goddamn life. And then after that, uh, I got accepted and, you know, little by little, eighth grade was so great. What and- was high school like? Were you an athlete in high school? Did you go back to football? Yes. I went, did? Back to, I went back did to football. Did you make it? In Yes. Okay, all right. 
But everybody Second makes strength. it. No, everybody, everybody <laughs> makes it. Everybody, everybody makes right. it. Okay. You don't get cut in high school. I got you. So, dude, I made it. They didn't know what to do with me. I made it. All they could think of was like, I'm slow as fuck. Like a little short. fullback or something. No, 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 dude. You got to understand. Uh, you said you I, had good hands. I had good hands, but I was super slow and small. Slow and small. So all they could think of is putting me as a backup wide receiver. And they never played me because I swear to God, in ninth grade at Santa Ana High, we had the greatest freshman football team of all time. It, I, I put that freshman football team against any, all those guys, it, it, for some reason, all those ninth graders could have played varsity. But they didn't. They just kept them as freshmen because they were true freshmen. They could have all played varsity. Right, they were fully like Royal Wilbon. He was the the wide receiver from uh, the black guy who uh, was at Willard in seventh mm -hmm. grade. Him and Donovan Maugo were the stars. Royal Wilbon, when he touched the ball, nobody could touch him. He was so fast. He was so quick. At every game, every game was like fifty five to nothing. They were all blowouts. Everything was just a complete. Massacre, a blowout, and I was Royal Will Bond's backup. <laughs> so you were never. <laughs> they never took him out, <laughs> even in <laughs> fifty-five, nothing or not putting your ass in. Yeah, yeah, but they put me in for one fucking play, like during during the season. They put me in for one play, but my rival who was a wide receiver on the other side. He was the other backup wide receiver. They put the, both the backups in, and he wanted so the play was to me, just five and out to the sideline. So he was fucking jealous that it was coming to me. Like they were, he was pissed off because this is the only time we're coming in, and uh, he lined up off sides or whatever. But I did, I did catch a ball and gain like two yards, and it went out of bounds and shit, and that was it. And uh, but the play got called back because he was lined up uh, like in the neutral zone or whatever, something like that, um, some kind of motion or some bullshit, and that was it. And then the last game of the season. Halftime against Santa Ana Valley. Halftime was 50 to nothing. We're destroying them. There's only one half left in the game in the season. Just one half. So at halftime, the coaches said, hey, we're going to let all the, because that was a bunch of scrubs like me. They never played ever. We were just, dude, I had a jersey. I had game day. I'd be walking around high school. 88, dog. It was 88. I'm like, no one, you know what I mean? I'm like, I never played, but I had that jersey and I could walk around with it because I was on the team. Um, broke as fuck. I had cleats that didn't fit. Oh, they were too small. After every football practice, I would be by the pool, the high school pool, just with dipping my feet in uh, in the pool, dude. Because <laughs> the cleats were too small and they were plastic as shit. They were like the worst because they were like 13 bucks. We bought them at a liquor store. And uh, so the last game, they said, we're going to let, they, dude, they were going to let all the scrubs start offense and defense. For this whole second half, I get to start wide receiver and fucking oh, and, get to play both and, and a defensive that. back. They were just going to let us play. We were up so much by halftime. It was like 50-something or nothing. So I was going to get to play the whole fucking game, the whole second half. So opening kickoff in the second half, we kick it to them. And we're all running, boom, going after them. I'm the last motherfucker there, right? And the first guy wraps the dude's legs up. Second, he's still standing, and then another guy just flies like fucking super fly snooker and uh, just hits him on top. The dude with the ball braces himself with his arm and pops his elbow off. So he's laying there, and his elbow's dislocated. They call the ambulance, and by the time the ambulance got there, the other team just forfeited the game. <laughs> you didn't even get the play. Yeah, I didn't nah. get the play. No. Just the kickoff. <laughs> just the kickoff. Special <laughs> And that was it. The ambulance took forever to get out there, dog. They took forever, so they forfeited, and the sun was going down. <laughs> We didn't have light. <laughs> oh fuck, dude, that is so that was hilarious. that was it. That was okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna be a rock star now. Now it's now it's 100 percent rock star. At first it was whichever one hits first. Mm. I was so confident I was gonna play football that when that uh, rival league, the USFL, mm -hmm. remember that one? There was yeah, two. Yeah. There was NFL and USFL. Yeah, we a had lot a Baltimore team, the Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, there was a uh, New Jersey Generals, Chicago Blitz. Trump was part of that. Was he? Okay. Yeah, I saw like thirty for thirty, and they said that he he was trying to buy a team or had something to do with that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was so confident when people would say, "What would you play for the USFL?" Or you're only going to play in the NFL. I'm like, you know what? Whoever pays me the most, you know?
And they're <laughs> so like, you're slow like, and they <laughs> well, It depends on the contract, brother. <laughs> All right. So, God, we have a lot. You're going to have to come back and do another episode with me. Um, I want to talk about you being a dad now because you grew up without your father. You grew up under the roof of an abusive stepfather who's also your brother and your sister's fucking dad. So how many kids do you have? You said you have a son, right? Yes. Just one? Just yep. one kid? Yep. All right. And what? It, and how are you as a dad? Like, do you, are you honest with them about your upbringing? And... Uh, he, um, you know, my dad, <clears throat> he was never around. Uh, like he can't, he would come by, take us to the movies. I went to work with him one day. He was a truck driver. So when he would, whenever he would pass through Orange County from LA to go to San Diego, he would check to see what my mom was doing or something. You know what I mean? And my mom was in love with him. My mom, even to this day, she's like, man, I should have stayed with your dad. Is that dad, right? Yeah. She just has a thing for my dad. And then <clears throat> I, he, my dad comes by when I was 14 out of the blue, uh, just to, drop in and see what my mom's doing, give me some money. I'm 14 years old. And when he dropped by unannounced, uh, uh, my mom's roommate, I thought it was her boyfriend, but it was my mom's roommate. She was living with a girl named Letty. Uh, and me and my brother were in one room, my mom and her friend her, who, who just got divorced were living in another room. Her boyfriend was eating breakfast downstairs with me. So my dad walks in and my mom's making the breakfast, but it's her Friend's, friend's boyfriend. boyfriend. My dad walks in and we say, hey, what are you doing here? And he goes, uh, let's go get something. He grabs me and goes, let's go get something to eat. He takes me to eight salt fish and chips and he tells me this is the last time I'm going to see you. I said, like, I didn't give a fuck because he wasn't around anyways. He never told me he loved me or nothing right. like that. He never said, I love you, son. He would just come around and give me, you know, see if, if, if he could hang out with my mom. That's what, he didn't want to get to know me and shit. So he said, this is the last time I get to see you. It's obvious that your mom is uh, moving on. You know, he had it all wrong. <laughs> that wasn't even her boyfriend. I thought it was, when I when I remembered it, I thought it, it was, you know, even if it was my mom's boyfriend, you know, he, um, <clears throat> the exact same thing would have happened. Uh, <clears throat> he decides to tell me that he's not going to come around no more. He doesn't want to interfere with uh, my mom and her relationships. So he he gives me a um like it's like deathbed confessional type shit. He goes two th two things I remember he told me. He goes this is like the last. Let me give you some like advice. And is this the son. last time you saw him? No. Okay. It was for fourteen years. For though. fourteen years. Though. But um <clears throat> he said when you get married, make sure your wife is at least fifteen years younger than you. Because women age quick. They age faster than men. He told me that. I was like the like before I leave before I leave you. Forever, <laughs> leave you some a uh, couple uh, bits of advice, and then the other one was always be nice to kids because they grow up real quick. And uh, then he was gone, so then I didn't see him from fourteen to twenty seven. So between fourteen and twenty seven, it was just Nothing. all music. It was just like I'm trying to be in a like uh, football ain't happening. So I went all in on music. Moved to Hollywood with my buddy James and John uh, to conquer the music business when I was 21. I lived in Hollywood since 21, um, 24, 25, still trying to make it, working check cashing, just working odd jobs. Um, started working at a strip club after check cashing, uh, became a D strip club DJ. Um, while I was in Hollywood, trying to make a, trying to get a record deal. Now it's 25. Then I, I like I didn't think I would ever see my dad again. Like I hadn't seen him since I was 14, now I'm 26. I still haven't seen him. <clears throat> I would have dreams that, you know, I see him and I wake up. I'm like, ah, I, I'm like, fuck him, you know, whatever. He didn't give a shit about me, so fuck him. But I always had him on, on my mind. And then out of the blue, I'm 27 and my aunt calls me and she goes, your dad's at your grandma's house. Come on down. I'm like, oh, shit. So <clears throat> I drive down to Orange County from Hollywood. Does and he know you're coming? Yeah, he knows. So my mom is going to meet us there. We're all going to my grandma's house. And, uh, you know, he was he was tight with my grandfather, but he had disappeared for so long. So now he's there. And my aunt's like, he, your dad's here. Come on down. So the whole drive, I'm like, I'm just going to let bygones be bygones. I'm just going to be cool. I'm not going to give him any attitude. Fuck it. He's back. I'm going to, I just want to get to know him. You know, I want to, you know, get to know my dad. Hell yeah. I'm not going to. 
I'm not going to give them any shit. I'm just going to be totally fucking cool. So I get to my grandma's, <clears throat> totally cool. We're all there. We're just shooting the shit. My mom's there. My mom's all happy. Like I said, my mom always had a thing for him, even to this day. She still, uh, she's, she'll still say, I should have stayed with your dad. He was so good to me. I'm like, really? He was married with five kids. <laughs> for real? <laughs> It gets worse though. It gets worse. So she, uh, so um, we're like, hey, let's go to let's go get something to eat. So we go to Black Angus on on Tustin, um, and we're all it's me, my mom, and my and my uh, dad. We're fucking damn. I thought the motherfucker was dead. Maybe like shit. Haven't heard from him in forever. I'm like god damn. Never expected this. Like fourteen years later, something like that. From fourteen to twenty seven. Thirteen years. Thirteen. And uh, now I'm like, he's here. He's like right in front of me. Holy shit. God damn it. He's right in front of me. Holy shit. And I'm telling him that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in Hollywood. I'm trying to get a record deal. It's, you know, got some producers. Da, 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 da. We're going to make it work. We're going to blow up. Da, da, da. He goes, shit. Okay. And then I decided, to, um, you know, I just wanted to ask him, <clears throat> why, why now? Why did you come by now? What, was, what were you thinking? And... Um, the right answer would have been, I just I wanted to see uh, what you were up to. It's been so long. I just wanted to see how you how you developed. And man, you know, I think about you even though I wasn't around, you know. Um, um, but he didn't say that shit. He said, I was passing through town uh, doing some deliveries. I wanted to see if your grandpa was still cool with me. And I was just like that. <laughs> you wanted to see if my grandpa was still cool with you? Huh. And then right there, I'm like, I'm never going to see this motherfucker ever again. Right there, I'm like, I got my mom's over here, right here. She's begging for my time. And I'm always telling her I don't have, you know, I'm busy, I'm busy. And now I'm trying to spend time with this motherfucker. If I'm going to give anybody my time, it's going to be my mom Yeah. at that point. And I just like, I didn't give a fuck what he said at that point. I'm like, you're dead to me. I'm like, fuck this motherfucker. And have you seen him ever since? Well... This is what As happened. He met your son. What th this is what happened. He goes, "Hey, your step, your half brothers and sisters, they want to meet you. Can I give them your number?" I said, "Yeah, give them my number." So they he he um gave them my number, and uh, then he called me and left a message on a vo on voicemail back then, um, and said, "Hey, let's go get some lunch." And. Uh, I, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, I wonder if he's saying that because I work, I DJ at a strip club because that's what I was doing at that time. <laughs> he wants to go see some Like, does he want to get some, does he want to use me for some pussy? <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That's the first thing I, I thought. I don't blame you. I so don't now blame you want to hang out? Right. No, I right. told you that, that I'm working at a strip club, yeah, right. DJ him. So um, I never responded. I just let it go. I said, fuck, I, I'm, I'm done. That's good. You set a boundary. Yeah, I'm like, I don't need that shit. I'm good. I'm fine. But his, uh, my half sister and brother, or they got a hold of me, and we went to Old Spaghetti Factory on Sunset and just and just hung out, and I met him. And <clears throat> my sister goes, "You know how many kids your dad have?" I said, six. They could try 19. No. I said, 19? He's got 19. 19? Dude, he was spraying everywhere. He's a truck driver, getting everyone pregnant everywhere. 19. 19. Jesus so at that point, Christ. it made me feel good. Yeah. Because at, before, I was like, how could he not care about me? Like, it, it's possible to have a kid and not give a shit about them? Never, He never told me he loved me and like... Is I, I was afraid to have kids because I thought I'm going to be like that. Right. And if I like, my worst nightmare is that my kid feels about me the way I feel about my dad. That would like make me want to kill myself. Yeah, you know. So <clears throat> I'm like 19. So I thought, oh, no wonder, no wonder he doesn't give a shit about me. There's too many kids. You can't give a shit about all of them. So I'm like, damn, he had a bunch of them. I was just one of a bunch. So it made me feel better about myself. Yeah, I hear you on that. I felt a little better. You know, and and then uh, I never saw. How many of them have you met? Just two. Just the two. And then a, another one. Um, uh, we DM each other on Instagram every now and now and then, Sylvia. Uh, but I never really, um, you know, because I got my my uh, brother and sister that I grew up with, and right. I, I don't barely give them any time. Like 
if I'm gonna if I'm gonna give someone time, I'm gonna give someone time that I grew up with and was there for me. You know what I mean? And uh, and not that I don't want to meet my other. I got a lot of half brothers and half sisters all over the place. It's not that I don't want to meet them. It's just that. Um, you know, I'm a son of my own now. I got, I'm so goddamn busy. It's hard to start like new relationships. Yeah, it's very yeah, hard. It's very, it's very hard. And, um, you know, I should be spending more time with my sister and my brother. And, you know, so there's that too. Um, Isn't it wild? Cause for me, my mom was your dad and, um, it blows me away that I'm the same way with my daughter. So we're about the same age when we had kids. So I'm, about two, I'm three years behind you. Yeah, and your son's ten. I was forty when I had. Well, yeah, I was, was forty one. I was forty two when I had my 41. son. Yeah, yeah, so I'm right there with yeah. you. And um, yeah, it blows me away though. I, I mean, every time I look at, it, I'm like, how the fuck could you hate your own kid? Yeah, how could you not want to see yeah. your own yeah. kid? Yeah, you didn't have nineteen of them. Yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> but then tell- you have to draw on those terrible times so you can say, I want to correct that, break that cycle. I don't want to be like my dad. Well, I found out the second he was born that I wasn't like my dad. And I tell my son I love him every day, oh, yeah. multiple times. Every time I see him, he just he just bows down and I kiss him on the top mm-hmm. of the head and just give him like 25 kisses before he goes to sleep. Tell him I love him multiple times. Mm-hmm. And we'll, it's like, it gets to a point where it's goofy. It's like super goofy. Like when I'm ready to go to work, I give him his kisses and tell him I love him. And I love you. He goes, I love you. And then as I walk away, I love you. I love you. I love you. Until we can't hear each other and I'm up the stair. I love you. I love you. And I love you. It's like goofy. And it's like, mm-hmm. but I don't give a shit either, how goofy dude. that is. I'll tell him I love you all day, every day. I'm Good just so you. stoked that I'm not like my dad. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm not trying to uh, not be like him. I'm not like him. Right. I I love my my son is everything to me. Yeah. My son is everything. He's my my whole life revolves around him. That's and, great. And and um, you know, trying to bring him up um as best I could. You know, I'm trying, you know. I'm not perfect, but I, you know, I'm doing my best. And I love him to death. I love being a father. You know, when you when you have a kid, like every year you get older, it sucks, right? You know, 52, I'm like, damn, 53, and then 54, and 50, like, but every year you 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 get older, your son gets older too, or your kids get older. Mm-hmm. So you get to experience them at that age. And then like now I'm 53, but he's gonna be 11. Now I'm 54, but I get him at 12. So um, I, you do live through your kids, like yeah, I do. Like I'm like like I do. I don't. I mean, I I don't know if you uh, if I'd say I live through them vicariously, but that's my flesh right there. Like, you know, the the, the second he was born, you know, had something to die for. Something yeah. he didn't know me from hole in the wall for the first year. He didn't know. He knew his mommy. He knew that titty. He knew that titty real well. But he don't know his dad. Like when you're like two months, you don't know who your father is. But it's it's um it's um mind boggling how uh, quickly you would give your life for him. Like if someone said you and your son, boom, right now, I'm like, bitch, of course, me. Yeah. Like like not even there isn't even a thought. It's crazy how there's living with um, someone you would die for is important. That's super important. When you're living and you have no one that you would die for, like nice. like you would just pick them over you anytime if there was like a choice of death. I think um, I think you're not uh, living to your full potential. I mean, I, I, I'm not talking shit on people that don't have kids, but um, unless you're a shitty person, if you have a kid, it's just, it, you realize like, damn, I didn't know I could love this much. I didn't know I love can get that high. I always thought, you know, love was right here. Yeah, I could love this. I could love that. And I love my dog and I love my cat. But when you have a kid, it's like, psh, you're like, oh, damn. You just yeah. turbocharger of love. Unconditionally, Unconditionally you know, um, yeah. it's, um, <clears throat> it's a lot scarier uh, when you have someone you would die for, you know, you're, you're vulnerable. You know, someone, there's someone that could, uh, you know, say anything happened to them, it would just destroy you. You know what I mean? That's, that's the, there's a, your weak, like the kryptonite, just the yeah. weakness, you know, um, you know, there's, that's the downside, but um, it, 
it wouldn't f be so amazing if there wasn't that, you know, if there wasn't that like, yeah, it's, you're vulnerable, but pff, it's the meaning of life. Like you were, you were someone's kid, like to not yeah. have, I mean, people that are, I know I have friends that are, they're, um, they love their animals and their pets to death, and but they don't want a kid. They're thinking, oh, this is enough. I got a dog and I got a cat, and that's enough. But um, anybody that loves animals that much, for sure going to be great parents. I that's, agree with that's that. That's the one thing. Like, Because uh, you have love in you. It's not yeah. about what you're loving. It exists in you. Yeah, if you love your dog you love. like it's like it's your best friend or it's like uh, it's part yeah. of you, uh, if you had a kid, Whoa, you would be a great mother. Yeah, I agree. Like, that's a good sign. Anybody that's good with pets and good with animals, they're going to make great parents. You're going to be a great sure. mom, Kirsten. For sure. She will. Right? All right. First of all, this has been a fantastic fucking episode. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I got that. to learn a lot about you. <laughs> um, now, I, I mentioned to you before off mic, um, I would ask you advice you'd give to your 16 year old self. So, after everything we've talked about here today, what would you tell 16 year old Eddie Bravo? Mm. Um, if that was like, here a, comes your son was, in six years. Yeah, if that was reality, if I really could tell my sixteen-year-old self, if I give my, uh, some of my advice, I if that was for real, I wouldn't say shit to him because I wouldn't change anything for the world. Because if anything got altered in my life, I will probably wouldn't have my son, and uh, I wouldn't take that chance. Like if I gave him some advice, that might just lead him a whole different way, maybe a more successful way or whatever. But then that means my son doesn't exist. So if if that was reality, yes, like you know, for a joke, stay the course as a, as a joke. No, not a joke. It's for real. Okay, for real, I want to say shit. Then just stay the stay course. Stay the course. Just that's that's great uh, advice, though. Yeah. That is the advice. <laughs> um, for a joke, I would say, dude, AIDS is fake. You don't have to wear condoms. <laughs> Throw that rubber away. <laughs> like, I remember this one time, this mama. Or, 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 <laughs> just remember, after you have raw sex, take a piss right afterwards. Great advice. Trust me. <laughs> um, one more time, promote everything you'd like, please. Look into it with Eddie Bravo on Rockfin. Um, the free episodes are available on iTunes as well and Rockfin. Um, go to samtriply.com for uh, the latest in tinfoil hat comedy shows that I do with him. It's me and Sam and all the info is on Sam's website. He's the the main dude. I just open for him. And what else? What else? Uh, Hook Thieves is... Um, uh, the my current music project and we're about to drop an album it's a it's a parody comedy album uh, uh acoustic piano um just goofy ass shit <clears throat> a lot of um scamdemic material in there uh that's how the old album came came along was during the scamdemic man i just spent a lot of fucking time writing music and writing just stupid lyrics about the stupid shit we're going through um <clears throat> that's coming out uh what else i guess that's it what do you want ig like what's your at eddie bravo 10p 10p. Uh, at Eddie Bravo is not me, and at Eddie Bravo 10 is not me. The, he's gotta, it's, you got to put the 10p. There's imposters out there. I know it. <laughs> Brother, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming on. This is thank a great you. episode. Appreciate it. Uh, as always, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to you all next week.